Next Chapter Podcast presents the Play On Podcast series, Coriolanus, Episode 7, Boy of Tears. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. Don't forget to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Down, daughter. Down, child. Let us shame my son with our knees. His new surname, Coriolanus, has more pride than pity for our prayers. Down. End this at last. Oh. So we will go home to Rome and die among our neighbors. No, look. This child that knows not what's to be, but kneels in fellowship. He gives more strength to our pleas than you have fight to deny. Come. Let's go. This fellow had a vulsion for his mother. His wife is in Coriolis, and his child looks like him by chance. Yet give us our leave. I am quiet until our city is on fire, and then I'll speak again. Oh, mother, mother, what have you done? Behold, the heavens open, the gods look down on this unnatural scene, and they laugh. Oh, my mother, mother, oh. You've made Rome victorious and given a mortal loss to your son. Believe it. You have induced him, but dangerously, for he lives in mortal peril now. But let it come. Aphidius, I can't hold my war promise, so I'll make proper peace. Now, good Aphidius, were you in my place, wouldn't you heed your mother or no, Aphidius? I too was moved by it. I'd swear you were. And sir, it is no little thing to make my eyes wet with compassion. But, good sir, what peace will you make, tell me? For my part, I won't go to Rome. I'll go back with you and pray you'll stand with me. Oh, mother, oh, wife! But we will drink in peace, and you'll bring back a peace treaty in writing better than words. With these same conditions, it'll be state-sealed. Come with us. Ladies, you deserve to have a temple built you. All the swords in Italy and her confederate arms could not have made this peace. See you that stone wedged in the Capitol's cornerstone over there? What? What about that? If it's possible for you to dislodge it just with your little finger, then there's some hope the ladies of Rome, especially his mother, could triumph with him. But I say there's no hope at all. We are sentenced with our throats waiting for execution. Is it possible that in so short a time a man can change so much? There's differences between a caterpillar and a butterfly, yet your butterfly was a caterpillar. This Martius has grown from man into dragon. He loved his mother dearly. And he loved me. And he remembers his mother now like a horse remembers its dam. He sits in his state chair as if he were Alexander the Great. What he bids be done is so done with his bidding. He has all things of a god except eternity in heaven. And no mercy, if you describe him accurately. I paint him true to his life. See what little mercy his mother will receive from him. There is no more mercy in him than there is milk in a male tiger. All that our poor city will find out, and all due to no mercy. May the gods be good to us. No. In a case like this, the gods will not be good to us. 
When we banished him, we did not respect them, and with him returning to break our necks, thus they do not respect us. What's the news? Good news. Good news. The ladies have prevailed. The Vulsians have withdrawn, and Martius is gone. There's never been a happier day for Rome. Fred, are you certain this is true? It's certain. Mm, as certain as I know the sun is fire. Oh. This is good news. I'll go meet the ladies. Mother Volumnia is worth all the consuls, senators, patricians a city holds. All tribunes such as you, filling sea and land. You've prayed well today. This morning, I wouldn't bet a small coin to 10,000 you'd survive. Listen, the joy. We'll meet them and celebrate together. Behold, our patroness, the life of Rome. Call all your tribes together, praise the gods, and make triumphant fires. Toss flowers before them. Quiet the noise that banished Martius. Recall him with the welcome of his mother. Cry welcome, ladies. Welcome! Welcome, ladies. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Head high, daughter. Head high. Tell the lords of the city I'm here. Deliver this paper to them. You entered your native Antium like a herald to no welcome home, but he comes back to shouts in the air. And patient fools whose children he's killed, their lowly throats tear, giving him glory. I know. And my reason to attack him has a great foundation to it. I put him on high, and I pledged my honor for his integrity. And then he was raised to such power. He watered his new Volsce plants with dews of flattery, seducing my friends, hiding his true self before he was seen as rough. Banished for it, he came to my home, pressed my knife across his throat. I took him, made him joint command with me, cleared way for him to do his bidding. No, let him pick from my troops to complete his tasks. My best men served his desires. Myself helped him steal his acclaim, which he ruined by himself. His pride is what wronged me. At the end, I seemed like his follower, not partner. He paid me with only his nod, like a mercenary. Yes, he did. The army was astonished by it. And at last, when we conquered Rome and had only to take our spoils and glory. That's it. And why I'll stretch all my strength against him. For a few drops of a woman's weeping, which are cheap as lies, he sold the blood and labor of our great efforts. So he will die and revive me in his fall. <clears throat> Here come the lords. Say no more. You are most welcome home. Yes, welcome home. I do not deserve it. But worthy lords, have you carefully read the letter I sent to you? We have it and are saddened to hear it. However he failed before this last, I think could have been slight crimes. But to give up our army's advantage, responding to us by returning our troops, making a treaty as they gave in, no excuse. Here he arrives. You will hear from him now. Hey, lords. I've returned as your soldier. No more infected by my country's love than what I left here, but still remaining under your great command. 
You should know that my efforts have been successful, winning bloody battles all the way to the gates of Rome. We've brought home victory spoils that counterbalance a full third of the costs of the wars. We've made peace with no loss of honor to the Antiates and no shame to the Romans. And now we here deliver this, signed by consuls and patricians both, along with the Senate seal, what we have agreed on. Do not read it, noble lords. But tell this traitor that he has abused your powers to the highest degree. Traitor? How is that? Yes, traitor, Martius. Martius? Yes, Martius. Caius Martius. Do you think I'll grace you with that robbery? Your stolen name, Coriolanus, in Coriolis? You lords and heads of state, Treacherously, he has betrayed your mission for a few salty tears from his wife and mother and given up your city, Rome. I say, your city. Breaking his sworn intent like a thread of rotten silk, never holding a war council even. But at his nurse's tears, he whined and roared away your victory to make young attendants blush and brave men gaze at each other. Hear this, Mars? Don't invoke that god, boy of tears. Huh? No more. Unending liar. You have made my heart too swollen to be contained, boy. Oh, dog. Pardon me, lords. This is the first time that I've had to scold. My dear lords, you must see this dog here is a liar. He who bears the lashes I've given him before and must bear my scars to his grave. He will show the lies he tells. Ha! Cut me to pieces, false kids! Men and kids, stain your swords cutting me. Boy, lying dog, if you wrote your true story, it'd be there. How like an eagle in a dove's nest, I fluttered your volsions in Coriolis. Alone, I did it, boy! Why, noble lords, recall it was mere chance, luck, that brought this shame on you by the unholy braggart standing before you now. Let him die for it! Tear him to pieces! Do it immediately! He killed my son! My daughter! He killed my cousin Marcus! He killed my father! Peace now, no outrage, peace! The man is noble and his fame covers the world. His last offenses against us will have proper trial. Stand, Ophidius, and don't disturb the peace. Oh, if I could, against six Ophidiuses or more, his tribe wield my sword of justice. Shameless villain. Kill, 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 kill. about the great danger he held for you. And from this rage he provoked, you can't know. But you will soon rejoice that he is cut short. And so my rage is gone, and I am struck with sorrow. Raise him up. Though in this city he's made widows, and destroyed children. To this hour, they wail those losses still. Yet he will have a noble memory. 
ease us through. The Play On podcast series, Coriolanus, was translated into modern English verse by Sean San Jose and directed by Kate Wisniewski. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Sound design and engineering by Daniel Benchamon. Mix engineer Larry Walsh. Mix engineer Sadaharu Yagi. Original music composition by Palmer Heffron. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. Senior producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing producer, Robert Cappadona. Coordinating producer, Taylor Bailey. Line producer, Priscilla Villanueva. Casting by the Telsey office, Karen Castle, CSA and Ada Karamanian. The cast is as follows. Andrus Nichols as Brutus and others. Cheney Waits as Larcius and others. Ching Valdez Aaron as Volumnia. Denaya Esperanza as Coriolanus. Jamie Ann Romero as Valeria and others. Kim Wan as Ophidius Virgilia and others. Lena Klingerman as citizens and others. Nancy Rodriguez as Sicinius and others. Namuna Cisse as Nicanor, soldiers, citizens, and others. Petrina Murray as Meninius. Vanessa Kai as Comenius. Zoe Tip as Adrian. Young Martius, soldiers, citizens, and others. Additional support was provided by voice and text coach Julie Foe. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. And production dramaturgy by Amrita Ramanan. The senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast series, Coriolanus, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the HITS Foundation. Visit ncpodcast.com for more about the Play On Podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at ncpodcast.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. Don't forget to keep your friends close and your enemies closer.